Hi, Ben Pearson, The Roads of Tracker, and today I want to talk to you about a comment that Elon Musk made when he was talking about Starship in the end of 2019 in October, I want to say. And that same system that we developed for Mars will long-term be used on Earth. So long-term, this is like, long-term we will produce the propellant for the rockets using solar power. Um, and pull the CO2 from Earth's atmosphere, use water, combine that into, into create CH4 and O2 on Earth. Um, and so the long-term um, outcome will be quite sustainable and renewable for Earth and Mars. Okay, so there's a lot to unpack in there, but I wanted to get down to the bottom of whether or not this is really feasible. Can we really make all of the methane to launch Starship uh, as many times as it's going to be launched? on Earth using solar power. So first of all, it makes perfect sense to manufacture methane in certain conditions. On Mars, it makes wonderful sense. The atmosphere is almost pure carbon dioxide. We can manufacture it there because there is no natural source of methane there and use it to return home and you don't need to use it very often. It makes beautiful sense there to use it. So why not use the same thing on Earth? Well, the math gets a little bit trickier here and I'm going to make a lot of assumptions here. We're not going to be able to dig into all of the details, but we'll get at least the basis covered, okay? So fundamentally, I'm making an assumption that all of the energy that the rocket produces would at some point in time have to be made with electricity. In reality, you're probably going to have to make two or three times as much electricity to generate the equivalent amount of energy in fuel. But let's just go with this for a minute and see where this takes us. So how much energy does methane burning produce? Well, it produces about 50, 50.1 50 specifically um, kilojoules per gram. It's a pretty significant amount of energy from a very, very small amount of methane. So how much methane is there actually on the entire starship? Well, we don't know exactly, but we can make some pretty good assumptions. We know that the total amount of fuel load is 1,200 tons. We know the optimal burning ratio is 4.7. When you do the math, that comes out to 255 tons of methane. Okay, so how much energy would that actually take to produce? Well, the answer is about 12.7 terajoules of energy. That's just a mind-bogglingly large amount of energy, and that's not really a common unit. So let's think about this in something that we do a little bit more commonly. Let's say that you wanted to produce that much energy in a single day. How much energy would you have to be producing constantly to do all of that? The answer to that is about 145-ish megawatts, which is a substantial amount of energy. It's far, far more than it's used in my house. Of course, you know, if you're having the fuel load for an entire rocket, it's going to be more than a house, but that's a pretty substantial amount of energy. It would take some serious, serious work to produce that much energy. But we have many power plants, some solar and some nuclear, that will produce that, and some coal and natural gas. Obviously, it doesn't make sense to burn natural gas to produce natural gas. You're going to lose energy in that process somewhere along the way. So let's start to make a few assumptions. Let's say you're not wanting to just launch one per day. So let's assume you have four launches per day. Let's assume that there's three times as much fuel in Super Heavy as there is in the booster. So essentially you have to make four times that much fuel. So 16 times the amount of energy. And let's assume you have a 50% efficiency, which is probably optimistic, although I'm not a chemist, so don't quote me on that. When you take all of those numbers into account, you come out to be a little bit over 2.2 gigawatts of power. Now that's some serious power. There are some various power plants that can do that, but it's not every power plant that can produce that much energy. So let's say that you were going to make that out of pure solar. Is there a solar power plant that's that big? Yes, there is. What's the problem with that? Well, it takes up about 40 square kilometers of land to produce that much energy from the sun. That's huge, that's 17 square miles. That's a serious amount of things. So if you're gonna produce the energy, you take Boca Chica, the launch site of 
the uh, Starship that's in Texas that they're building right now. And if you go and basically take all of this protected land that's around it and you put solar panels on it, then you'll have about the right amount of energy to do that. But that seems kind of ludicrous to do. But there is alternatives in my mind. This makes perfect sense if you use nuclear power. The load for a nuclear power plant it works best if you have a constant load, if you're always trying to produce the same amount of energy. Well, if you're manufacturing methane to launch rockets, you're going to have a very, very consistent energy flow throughout time. So it's not going to very much. It'll be very, very safe, very stable. You're not going to have some of the weird kinds of issues that happen. And it would be a perfect use case. You would take only a small fraction of the area to do this. It would work fantastic. Now, I know there's probably some of you out there who are fearful of nuclear power. And yes, there have been some major incidences, Chernobyl being the most notable one. Yes, Chernobyl was a huge tragedy. In the end, something like 26 people died as a result of the incidences directly related to the reactor. And the radiation exposure caused a number of cases of cancer that were probably new probably resulting in a few extra hundred deaths, although the exact number is hard to tell. But that was with a very poor reactor, very poor safety, very poor safety culture. If you have a nuclear reactor that operates safely, then you're not going to have those problems. And most of the problems associated with nuclear are in terms of the economic damage not in terms of damage to people. So I'm going to do a whole nother video here soon about why I think nuclear power is the answer. But suffice it to say, I think that using pure solar is kind of crazy to manufacture this much rocket fuel, but it'd be an excellent use case for a nuclear power plant. Now on Mars, it makes sense to use solar because there's nothing there. There's no wildlife. So you're putting a solar panel out there is not going to make any kind of a problem. And also, you don't need to use as much, but if you're going to make it on Earth, you really, really should build a proper power plant. And nuclear power really is probably the best way to produce that much energy. Thank you guys so much for everything. Let me know whatever questions or comments you have. And until next time, keep on tracking. Take care.